Hey guys, David Ronson here. <clears throat> what I want to talk about uh, for this blog is converting uh, our Revit systems into fabrication and how to get the uh, inline uh, equipment uh, to fill automatically for us, um, namely valves um, in terms of pipe, um, in terms of duct. Uh, you have all your other inline equipment. This process would be the same between duct and pipe. Uh, so what I want to show you, I've got a sample Revit model here. Um, what I've drawn out is some different runs of uh, pipe, which is regular Revit pipe. Um, you can see this is a two inch diameter pipe. And I've added some inline uh, equipment. Uh, I've click on this here you'll see that this is an Apollo ball valve if we were to convert this uh, without any planning uh, the ball valve would not convert um, <clears throat> we have to tell the software if you do convert this valve um, what to put in its place same thing is going to be true obviously for all our other types of valves here the way Autodesk has set this up <clears throat> is we can map this automatically uh, through button codes. If you look at the name over here in the type selector, you'll see Apollo valve 2 inch. Apollo ball valve is the actual name of the family. 2 inch is the type. Um, so in type can mean a lot of different things with families. Um, in this case, it's more or less the size, the diameter. So we have to go tell fabrication that in the case of Apollo ball valve two inch, we want to put in this ball valve from our service okay I'm gonna jump over here to AutoCAD I'm gonna show you what this looks like so in order to convert all the valves that I have in that model this is what the bu button mapping needs to look like in the case of that two inch that we were looking at we have Apollo ball valve underscore two inch the underscore is separating uh, the the actual name of the family and the type so you'll have to have that to separate uh, the two and then it, if it finds this family we want it to put in ball valve okay and we've assigned that button code to this item so it's going to find that family and come insert this ball valve. But as you can see, we have to do that for every instance of that valve, every size. So in, in the case of this model, I'm only, I have four sizes for this ball valve. Um, you know, there, there could definitely be more sizes. Um, we would have to have more entries in our button codes list here. So I'm going to go convert this and you'll see how it converts. All right, so um, all of our valves came in. These are fabrication valves as you can see okay now that works um, to me what doesn't work is the management of this list uh, this list is going to be very relevant to who's sending you the Revit model where do they get the families did they build them themselves did they download them off the internet um, and there's no standard naming convention for these valves either. So 
if you'll notice, these these valves here have two uh, inch with the inch spelled out. Um, these valves have three uh, with the actual inch mark. So it's very relevant or uh, dependent on how these valves are named. Um, and obviously what sizes are listed, um, what sizes are being used. So this, this list can be, um, I think in, in my terms, a non-starter for a database manager to be getting in his services and inputting button codes um, every time a new job rolls around. So what I'm thinking of is a way that we can uh, standardize these button codes um, to reduce the amount of time the database needs to be edited and modified. And the way we're going to do that is by reducing two inch. This is the type. This is your diameter. We're going to reduce that down to only one entry. So this ball valve here has uh, all these size entries and I want to reduce those down to only one entry so this basically can say uh, ball valve uh, standard refill it with the button code from my from my items from my library okay so what I've done is uh, and let me show you real quick uh, the Victolic one all right so here's a Victolic item the, this should be sizing down, um, and, and it's not just because I didn't download. There's a something called a lookup table. I didn't download that, so it's not sizing correctly. But if you'll notice here with this uh, family, there's only one type, and it's called standard. This is a 12-inch... Uh, strainer it's a nominal radius of six inch but it says standard up here in the type same thing's going to be true for this one the diameter is 10 but the type is still standard so i only need to have one entry um, for all of these strainers in order for them to convert and i'll show you that real quick all right so here's my entry for those strainers i only have one all these others that the type is actually calling out a size, I have to have multiple entries for those. So we could go with this uh, method and all of our items, our globe valves, we'd have to convert them into using uh, some sort of lookup table or uh, calculation in order to reduce that family down to only one uh, type. Now, I've spent a lot of years um, becoming a fabrication expert and I'm trying to become a Revit expert and uh, there's a lot to learn and building families is one of those things. So something that I came across is what if I were to convert a um, lever handle uh, butterfly valve and I use that one and we're supposed to be using gear um, to, to, to me the, the, the objective here is mapping we have to get the mapping down in order to get that conversion to work correctly so what I did was I wanted to reduce that down to just more or less a design line node. Um, those who use fabrication, you'll understand what that is. I'm going to jump back over here to my uh, AutoCAD here. We're going to look at the database. And I inserted a butterfly valve node here. Okay. So when this fills, it's going to fill a butterfly valve and of course all the flanges and welds to to make that happen 
and that's because the button properties of this item is butterfly valve. So I want to take along take this same concept and apply it to Revit. I want to take this node concept and use it in Revit. So what I've done is I've built some families that are nodes, more or less. There's not any uh, 3D geometry. Um, it's just there to take up space and to uh, make my mapping correct. So I selected those ball valves and I'm going to swap them all out for my generic uh, node. You'll notice here the name of the node is ball valve designed to fab. Okay, and they all look the same. They're not any bigger, not any smaller. Uh, I can tell what that is just because of the annotation that's being applied to it. Okay, so I'm going to do that to all these valves here. Once you have the uh, basic geometry to all these items, the only items, I keep calling them items, uh, families or nodes, um, the only difference is the actual name of the family. Uh, they all will size to any size they're placed on. So they're not being restricted, uh, just like a node. I can place a butterfly node on a half inch line. And it's not going to fill, uh, but I can put it on there. Um, so you're going to have the same uh, management uh, that you would typically have in a design line workflow. All right. So I've done and I've swapped all those out. Um, and all we can see is just a little square box with the annotation. Uh, and I will go to a fine view and basically the same thing. I'm not getting any uh, extra 3D geometry. We'll look at this in a 3D view here. Um, again, just the nodes. And we'll go to a uh, fine view. And I'm just, I'm again, maintaining that, that node state. So back in my button mappings, I can delete all these entries. Oh, there's 40 on that. So I had 43 entries in order to make that work. I'm going to jump over here to my supply side because these are my button mappings. And I'm going to bring these back over here so as you can see uh, what I what, what is in these button mappings is uh, the name of the family and the type uh, the name of the type I chose design to fab um, just because I the only purpose to these uh, families or nodes is for conversion so these don't need to be in a model unless that's they were placed there for that purpose so I'm going to go ahead and click OK there. Jump back over here to Revit. And I'm going to reload uh, that service. Click OK. And select all the items there. And do the convert. OK. So as you can see, uh, we got uh, all the inline equipment that's supposed to fill. 
just based on those uh, node families uh, telling us that that's what we want to place in that spot. Okay. There is uh, another mapping uh, method that we could do. It's not as reliable. Uh, one of the great things about Revit is the ability to just swap out uh, families for the same type of family. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna undo till I get my families back here. All right. So I'm gonna go build a schedule of all my pipe accessories and valves fall under the category of pipe accessories and I'm still working on figuring out what all else falls under that category um, if I go to count uh, which is equivalent to our equal uh, quantity I'm gonna put in the family and type that'll give me the name and I'm gonna put in size That'll tell me the size. And typically I'm going to have, I'm, I'm not going to itemize every instance. In fact, um, I will type size. Okay. All right. So let's go to view, tile this. Don't need that. I'm going to copy this just so we can get multiple quantities in the schedule. All right. So right now we've got a quantity of two of this ball valve, one inch, uh, and the size is one inch. So what I can do here is change the valve swap out the valve through schedules. So I don't necessarily need to know where that valve is in the model. Um, I just know I need to swap it out. Um, in this case, it's nice to use this method because uh, let's say they put a ball valve on a four inch line. And in reality, we need to have a uh, butterfly valve there. You'll see that it's using a four inch ball valve. Um, then you'll have the opportunity just to swap those out uh, for the uh, butterfly valve node slash family. Uh, so you'll get a butterfly valve there instead. Um, so I can click on this and let's go down to ball valve, design to fab. And you'll notice how that took place. I selected the wrong one and I did balancing valve instead of ball valve to pay attention. There we go. And I can do that to the next one. What I can't do is I can't do this in bulk. Uh, you know, I can't select this column and this column and make that change. Uh, obviously, in a, in a real project, um, your valves aren't all going to be in a row. Um, if they are, it's a pretty cool project. Um, so this might be a reasonable method. The The drawback to this method is that sometimes um, items don't get swapped out correctly. Uh, I've had a couple pro test projects I've tried this on. And so, for some reason, the, the, um, the node is not taking on the size of the pipe um, and it's just putting it down to one uh, to a one inch node even though you know the pipe is two and if I use the type selector uh, which is this over here on the top left if I use the type selector um, every time uh, they swap in correctly so just pay attention to to each uh, valve as you swap them out if you're going to use the uh, schedules method here. Okay. So I'm going to uh, let's. Oh, yeah. See, the great thing about that was it swapped out these ones too. 
and these ones here all at the same time. All right, so I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to swap these in again. And the goal here is to have your um, designers doing the same um, process in every project. Um, it puts the burden on them to do these types of things instead of putting the burden on your database admin uh, to input all this stuff uh, into the database when it's really actually project specific. And we, we really want to try to keep project specific information out of the database. All right, so now that I've fixed that, uh, swapped them all out, I'm going to go ahead and, oh, I think I need to uh, reload my database. And do my design to fab. If you're using the uh, applied software value pack, um, these valves are part of it. They're really not complicated uh, families. Um, it's something that you can build. And that's that, that that's my goal is to try to make this uh, uh, doable by uh, most, most uh, users of the software. It's just something that you could do. You can build that family. It's not a complicated family. If you have any questions, uh, shoot me an email and I'd be happy to to hammer out some details and which, which what features can we take advantage of that'll uh, reduce cost and, and time on the projects.